The Quincy Historical Society is once again open to the public at the Adams Academy building on Adams Street in Quincy Center. We're so pleased to welcome here in studio Executive Director Dr. Ed Fitzgerald, Curator Alexandra Elliott to give us all the details. Said Alexandra, great to see you in person. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, yeah. likewise, Pleasure. absolutely. Made the long trek over. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. All those long miles from the UK. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, Quincy Center, of course, Ed looks a, a whole lot different <laughs> it does. today than it does not too long ago. It yeah. does, yeah. Um, it, um, in, in both ways, I mean, it looks a lot different than it did three years ago, right. and it looks a lot different than it did at last year at this time. I mean, it's alive, mm. and people are moving. And That's right. Things are happening yep. once again. What's happening at the Historical Society? We are open. Mm -hmm. Would you like to talk about how we are open? Absolutely, yeah. So we opened uh, back in, I think it was mid-August. Um, for the first time for since the, March of 2020, For right? the first time in over a year and a half, yeah. I know. It, it, it was very exciting. Yeah. Um, so we opened, and so it's uh, somewhat on a more limited basis at the moment, okay. uh, just while we, we're still getting back on our feet. So we're open Monday, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, and Friday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, and then we are also have our uh, uh, research library open uh, by appointment as well. Okay, and how does somebody make an appointment for that? So they can either give us a call okay. um, at 617-733-1773. Um, and then we, you can also email us, and I definitely know our email address, at info at quincyhistory.org. Okay, yeah. and what are the kind of COVID protocols at the Historical Society? So we just require that when people are inside the, Acad the Adams Academy that they wear masks. Um, and so we have some on offer as well. We got s uh, some for free from Dagny over at uh, Discover Quincy. Yeah. Um, so that was very generous of her. So we have masks available for anyone if they forget. Mm -hmm. um, and we just ask that people wear them when they're inside the Academy. And of course, staff will do so as well. Okay, and speaking of um, staff, uh, how's the Historical Society coping with you know staff? We're doing pretty well. Okay, because yeah. it's, it's a shortage everywhere. You know. Yes, yeah, yeah. No, we unfortunately we are still a little bit short staff. We're still getting our volunteers back okay. and um, getting back to full capacity, but we're, we're doing well enough. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, and you know the story of the pandemic is, is not over yet, so we don't, Correct. <laughs> we, we don't know the ending, but is the Historical Society planning to kind of document it, um, if you will, for future generations? I think we will. Uh, uh, the immediate documentation, of course, is you know is being done by you and by the library and uh, other resources in, in town, who I think are probably better set up to to catch the immediate data. Mm -hmm. I think as the historical society, we're going to come into play when it's time to start sifting, probably. Yeah. Which is, first of all, we want the darn thing to be over, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and uh, then it will be, you know, I, I think sometime. Uh, before you have to get any perspective. Um, it was just right before this pandemic hit, we had, of course, kind of just done the the, 20, the right. 1918 and, and yes. epidemic, so. Yes, as a matter of fact, I know um, the Historical Society, Alexandria put together a virtual presentation yes, on yeah. the 1918. And entirely by coincidence, we had we had just wanted to capture the an, the 100th anniversary before the pandemic, and then right. of course, as soon as all of this starts happening, well, suddenly everyone's very interested in hearing that story again. So we uh, reprised the the program that we did, and then we also put a lot all of the data that we collected up online on our blog. Yes. Um, and so we have a, a digital exhibit at the moment on our blog about the mm. 1918 pandemic, and including a epidemiological spot spot map mapping uh, the spread of um, the disease through Quincy. So it's, yeah. it's very interesting uh, what you can learn from that. The similarities are amazing it between really is, yeah. then and now. You would think given all the advancements in medicine and, and technology that there'd be a very different story to tell. But really the human story yeah. of the 1918 flu pandemic is very similar. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. yeah. And you know, of course, the the old cliche is that um, I think it's Mark Twain who said it. Uh, history doesn't repeat itself, but it sure as heck does rhyme. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's so true. Um, you mentioned the blog. Yes, that's something new. It is. Yeah. Yes, that was uh, another project that we started over uh, the pandemic, and that's been very successful. Great. People, it's been very well received. Um, so that is the Quincy History blog, um, okay. and that was one of the ways that we um, start uh, started to communicate with our you know our followers and our friends um, during the pandemic was so that we could still you know be a part of the community and and be able to do our work and share Quincy's story. Yeah. yeah. 
And, and how is that? How do people access that? How is so that is um, quincyhistory.net backslash blog, or okay. you can just Google the uh, Quincy History blog, and it will be right there. Okay. Is it is it interactive or, or to an extent? Yeah. Okay. So there's a number of um, articles on there, but mm -hmm. then there's also the digital exhibits. We have two at the moment. Okay. One about the like I said, the 1918 uh, influenza pandemic, and then we also have one about Howard Johnson's. Oh. Uh, a little bit, <laughs> a slightly lighter topic. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we have so those are a little bit more interactive. Yeah. Um, um, and uh, we're always working to create more content for that as well. Okay, so this is something you think will continue post-pandemic. Oh, absolutely, uh, post -pandemic. yes, yeah. absolutely. It's just another thing. Uh, so many organizations, I think, have, have found, you know, they found ways to quote-unquote pivot, mm. you know, uh, electronically yeah. um, to communicate with members or guests or, or yeah. customers or what have you. And a lot of that, I think, is, is going to stay. You know, mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. not going to go away. And, and even organizations that like the historical society that have been around for yeah. over 100 years right. are, you know, are doing finding it the same way for 100 years. Finding, <laughs> finding, finding new ways, ways to do, new ways to do yeah. things. Yeah. yeah, right. I mean, you know, we, we had been doing, I think since it was first formed, they had been doing live lectures. Right. And, of course, that was not a possibility. So mm -hmm. in cooperation with the Thomas Crane mm -hmm. Library, and with and one or two on our own, mm. we started doing the online Zoom mm -hmm. lecture, mm -hmm. and those are actually quite. Uh, th they were very successful, I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I think we had over a. I think it was 130 attendants to the first one we did, which seriously? was the which was the um, the 1918 yeah. pandemic yeah. Uh, reprisal program. So I mean, in, in many ways, you probably would have never had that many people show up for an in-person. We can't fit that many people in our building. Right, right, um, right. And that's something also that we met, that we saw over the course of the pandemic was that we got um, people who could not come out exactly. to many of our programs uh, attending the the online ones. So we're we're definitely looking for ways in which we can continue to offer an online, yeah. uh, potentially yeah. filming uh, okay. live programs and yeah. putting them up online because okay. we want to reach as many people right. as possible with yeah. our programs. Yeah. Yeah, so I think, you know, especially over the next couple of months, that'll be the way we go with things that we're doing. I think, sure. we, I think we will be relying very much still on um, Zoom and YouTube as the way to communicate with people. Yeah. And well, the convenience uh, factor you can't beat, you yeah. know, and the, and the increase in accessibility for folks mm. exactly. is yeah. unmatched. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's nothing quite the same as being live in a room. Oh, no question. Room. But no. but until that time, and even, and once that time arrives, I think we will try and continue, as Alexander mm -hmm. said, we'll, we'll try and continue doing the... Doing both, right? Doing, doing both, a exactly. Yeah. A hybrid model, to, yeah. to yeah. borrow that's a term. That's, that's the newest term, <laughs> right. yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, a little bit of both. But, but right, exactly. Um, no, yeah. you're right. You cannot, you cannot replace an in-person experience, yeah. either like we're in right. here now in a studio right. talking together, or getting the ambiance of the uh, the Adams Academy right. building, you know. Yeah. And, and, and even just, you know, I know speaking for myself, just as a presenter, just having the crowd and feeling yes. and knowing, okay, pe I can see people are falling asleep. I should probably <laughs> hurry the section <laughs> up or I can tell, right. oh, people are really interested. I should maybe go, right. go on it's it. It's true. Right. Yeah, there's yeah. Yeah, eye contact yeah. and body language. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can't get through a two-dimensional right. screen. You right. know, it's just not, it's just, it's just not feasible. Um, so it's nice to have you open again, I'm sure. Right. Oh, have wonderful. you found, Ed, that folks are happy to come back in? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, I think there's still some wariness of sure. out there in yeah. the public, and until people get vaccinated, I think that's going to you know continue to be the case. Sure. But, um, um, but people are happy to come back. They're, they're happy to know we're there. Yeah. And um, so we've, yeah, we've got people coming in. We've also still got uh, people coming from not just locally, but we've had people coming in from other parts of the country. I wanted to, to ask visit, about so visitations, yeah. yeah. Okay, because yeah. I know that the uh, the National Park, I don't think it's going to open this year. It doesn't look like anyway. They are doing, I believe, um, limited tours in which you can kind of tour the grounds. They will take they, you oh through, yeah. the, through the grounds. Yeah. But I, yeah, I don't know whether they're going to... I know the yeah. birthplaces are also... Those uh, are having scheduled, scheduled tours. Scheduled tours, yeah. Uh, yeah. just for the birthplaces. I don't think the old house is open this year. Yeah. No, yeah. it's not. No. No. I don't yeah. think it's going to. Does, it, do, does that impact uh, the historical society? To an extent, yeah. I know that um, we, we've we had the, the park asking us a, a few times, um, oh, are you open? Can we... Because we have people wanting to, you know, learn the history of Quincy, sure. so mm -hmm. they want to send them to us and so of course now that we're open we're happy to have sure. people come yeah. in yeah that's great yeah. so yeah. it's nice to hear um, the newest addition to I guess Quincy history if you will um, is the new welcome center yes yeah. At yeah. the Monroe building oh it's uh, fantastic yeah. that, that is now a city building mm -hmm. right is the historical society played a role in getting that up and running 
not so much. That's no. mostly been uh, on Make, the city front. Um, yeah, Discover uh, Quincy folks. Yes, yeah, yeah okay, they've exactly. done a great job, and it, we were mm -hmm. there for the opening, and it looks beautiful, so that's sure. a, a great addition, and it's a great location. Yes, um, yes. So yeah. we're, of course, very happy to have them directing people to us, and, and mm -hmm. um, it's, it's going to be a great resource. Yeah, it's, it's the northern entrance to the new Hancock Adams Common, really. So exactly. it, you know, people coming off the T station, of course, right there um, as well. So mm -hmm. visibility factor yeah. is fantastic. Um, and uh, you're now permanently in, in, entombed, if you will, in the Adams Academy <laughs> building, right? Because the city bought that too, Ed. Well, not yet. <laughs> oh, okay. It's since it, that's still in process. Okay. Uh, but uh, yes, I think uh, we're very happy that the city is, is making the move in that direction yeah. to, to start the process of taking the, the academy and really ensuring that it remains as a, it's a, it's a national landmark, it's important to local history, it's important to yeah. national history, it's important to the history of architecture in America. So it, it's a building that really needs to s keep its integrity and, and be preserved. So we're delighted the city is, is doing this, yeah. Um, can you tell me anything about the plans for the um, Adams Library, if you will? Um, I know that uh, the interest continues. Yep. Um, it's pretty clear that it's more than pretty clear that John Adams gave the books to the town of Quincy, okay. now the city of Quincy. Um, it's a long story as how they wind up at the BPL, <laughs> but we're not going to get involved. Right. right. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, I think uh, there's a very good argument that they belong back here, and yep. um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, the mayor, I know, is trying his very best uh, yeah. to work out an agreement with the Boston Public yeah. Library to get the collection right. um, back into the city. Right. Um, I spoke with him this morning, and he said, so far, it's been crickets. <laughs> <laughs> so, so no movement there just yet. <laughs> Would it be different from the Stone Library uh, at the Adams Park? Yeah, okay. it's, um, they are similar but not matching. As, uh, they're both essentially books that the individual father collect, and son. Yeah, father and son collected. Okay. Um, John's are, I think, just because of time, they're uh, maybe a little more, um, there are some that are probably a rarer. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah, there are a few in there that he had that, that go they're certainly older, considerably right? old, yeah, yeah, and considerably older than his lifetime too, but not many. Okay. Um, John had a habit of arguing with people mm. on the pages of the book. Yes, um, known for that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah in the margins. And yeah. I, as ar argumentative as he was in other circumstances, I don't think John Quincy did that. So I don't, um Well, he was a diplomat, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, so supposedly was John. Well, right. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Maybe Do you not know, as strong. Before. How big is the collection that John Adams it's collection? It's uh, about 3,000 volumes. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, you know, volumes are, a volume is a volume. Yeah. I mean, a volume can be a quarter inch thick or it could be three inches thick. Right. So in terms of shelf space, it's a little hard to figure, mm -hmm. but it's about 3,000 books. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which is, for a guy in the 1700s who, you know, there weren't a lot of books published, first of all, right? Well, right, and you know, <laughs> there was no, nothing else to divert him, particularly here. I mean, you know, here in Massachusetts, the more he couldn't even go out to the theater. I oh, mean, sure. You, know, you were going to, you got to read and you got to go to church, and that was <laughs> your entertainment. Yeah, you know, so. yeah. So uh, you need to have, you know, yeah. like we have 3,000 TV channels today. Yeah, you need exactly. 3,000 3, <laughs> books to read. <laughs> um, Alexandra, you mentioned that the museum mm -hmm. um, is open. What's in the museum at the Historical Society? Uh, so right now we have our permanent um, exhibit, which is uh, of, sh uh, of stone ships and mines. Yep. I, yes, okay. stone ships and mines. Um, so it's just a, uh, a general uh, overview of the history of Quincy. Okay. So starting from uh, very early Native American history and all the way up through the uh, founding of Dunkin' Donuts and Howard Johnson's um, and uh, some of the more modern things. So yeah. and we cover all of it. So there's quite a lot packed into a, a, a room that's, you know, a good size, but still you, it's, it's a lot of history for a small space. Okay. Um, all right. So we have um, some, of course, Revolutionary War artifacts sure. as well. Um, one of my personal favorite items in the museum is the front door key uh, to the house that used to be on the property of the Adams Academy, which was John Hancock's birthplace. Oh. Um, so that's, that's one of my favorite pieces in the museum. Interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. 
who, who knew that there needed to be a key? I know, I know. <laughs> at that point. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and is there a fee or, or nope, charge? No, it, is, it okay. is. Of course, we are always happy to take donations if people sure. find mm -hmm. that suitable, but it is uh, free to the public. Okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. Any plans to update it or change it in the future? Oh, we're always thinking about that. Yeah. It's, it's, um, but we're still we're getting getting over the pandemic before we really yeah. uh, get to that. Let's get it reopened first, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but of course, in a not too distant future, Ed, uh, Quincy is going to be 400 years old. Mm -hmm. That is true. Yeah, and I'm sure you're playing a big part in planning that. We're involved, and we're thinking about things to do on mm -hmm. our own, and we're you know, we as as always. If are willing to more than happy to provide any consultation with the city that they they would like us right. to have. So um, yeah, I mean it's a it's a significant anniversary. Mm. What happened in the 300th anniversary? 300th anniversary was a big blowout. Actually, it was, <laughs> was really, it really? Yeah, <laughs> okay. I mean it was big. Um, they had a huge parade. It was a week lo the, the, a week long festivity. A huge parade. They had. What was very popular at the time and really lasted at, up to the 1950s, but historical pageants. Uh, so Pageant Field mm -hmm. uh, is where they had oh. the pageant. Okay. And it, everybody and his brother and sister were in it. From <laughs> you, The whole point was everybody got to dress up and play a historical character. So you had three or four hundred Quincy people in this pageant and uh, w they played five nights or something up there. Wow. So they, you know, the, the it was a big, it was a big deal. Okay. So, they got five years to match it. <laughs> <laughs> four years. <laughs> you see, now it's four years. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Um, and I know things are starting to happen already. We're going to see the General's Bridge dedication. Mm -hmm. General's Bridge dedication is coming up. In the not and too distant future, yeah. yeah. And that's recognizing an important part of Quincy's history and current history as well. Sure, yeah. absolutely. And then later on this year, um, I know that the uh, said the old, the original town hall, right? Uh, yes. The stone building has a uh, exhibit right on the main yep. floor there as well. Yeah, we're that working with probably some consultation on changing that exhibit space up um, and trying to do something in kind of in, in relation to uh, the generals and the right. military history. You know, it's impossible to do a comprehensive mm -hmm. military history, but to try and highlight some of the human stories involved in the amount of military service and civilian service that's that's gone on here over the time. Yeah. yeah, and does it also give the Historical Society kind of another venue, if you will? Another it, it does, but yeah. it's really the city's space. Sure, I mean, oh you sure. Know, I mean, so w it's really, we'll do whatever, you know, needs to be done, yeah. uh, done there. But it's a chance, yes, to do things that uh, fit in that particular space or, you know, and have a particularly civic theme, I think, is what, uh, mm -hmm. is what the mayor's intention is for that space. And uh, so, you know, we help out when we can. Yeah, well, I'm assuming yeah. you have things in storage yeah, that have not exactly. been seen in many, many exactly. years, you know, that could, could be yeah. highlighted uh, at certain times right. of the year, certainly. Yeah. Um, are you involved at all with the shipbuilding museum and, and trying to uh, kind, of, uh, kind of promote the USS Salem? And, and, and yeah, I mean, we do what we can. At the moment, yeah. they're maybe giving us, they're actually giving us some help with mm. a couple of the projects we're working oh. on. So, okay. you know, it's good to have a, a, a we enjoy good reciprocal relations sure. with th them and with the Adams and with the Thomas Crane and the church and all of those. And the Quincy Homestead. And the Homestead, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, yeah, I know the new all of them. Um, President's Trail, I guess, just recently yes. debuted, yeah. trying to tie all those sites yeah. um, together. You know, right. So as, you, as you mentioned, they're, they're kind of disjointed um, on, on their own, uh, trying yeah. to make it a cohesive story, if you yeah. will. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And particularly for out-of-town people, because yeah. um, the, one of the good things about the trail is, as opposed to saying, okay, well, Go out of our door and then turn right and no, don't take the first <laughs> left. Take the second <laughs> yeah, left and right. then make your third right. You know, you can if say, you don't just know, look for the sign and yeah. follow the thing on the on the road. Right. right? So yeah, um, very much like the Freedom Trail in Boston. Yeah, right? exactly. you, know, yeah. Uh, you know, you can tell somebody who lives in Quincy where to go and they know exactly what you're talking right. about. You tell somebody from South Carolina, <laughs> <laughs> they're going to end up, I don't know, in West Quincy. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's nice. That's nice yeah. to see, actually. Yeah. yeah. So you help. You did help. Kind we of did a little. We did help with with some of the. You, the science, you know, the just logistical you know, the part information of it. And stuff, yeah. yeah, very good. Yeah. Um, Alexandra, the blog? Yes. Is, uh, is what's on it right now? Um, so right now, some of our um, more popular 
um, topics have been, uh, we did a uh, blog post going into um, John Adams and Josiah Quincy Jr.'s involvement during the um, Boston Massacre trials, okay. that, so corresponding to the 250th anniversary of that last year. Yeah. Um, so that was very interesting. Uh, we also have some biographies of Solomon Willard. We're talking a little bit about the Sacco and Vanzetti ties in Quincy as oh. well, because we have a 100th mm -hmm. anniversary there. But our two most popular topics have been, um, uh, first of all, we featured a article that uh, one of our volunteers and board members, Wayne Miller, uh, wrote for our newsletter uh, talking about a man by the name of Joseph Lee, who was an inventor. Uh, he had been, at, for, he was formerly enslaved, um, mm. I believe in South Carolina, I can't remember I exactly, so, yeah. I think it was South Carolina, and then ended up opening a, a number of restaurants in Massachusetts and including, um, and some of his guests included, you know, president, various presidents of the United States. Mm. Mm. So very successful businessman here in Quincy. He, and he operated the Squanum Inn and then his, his family op operated Lee's Inn in Squanum. Oh, okay. And then our most recent post has probably been one of our most popular, yeah. um, and this is detailing the um, history of one of the first Chinese restaurants in Quincy. Uh, so going into so one of the fir uh, very early Chinese American families, the yeah. Ng family, um, I'm sorry, the, name and the again. Ng family, Ng, okay. um, and their restaurant, the um, the King Joy restaurant, was a, the the longest name that it had. It had a few names over the years, okay. but the King Joy, um, and then that was located uh, at various points on in and around Hancock Street, and then on um, Cottage Ave and and Chestnut as well. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it, it bounced around a few times, but it was very very successful. You know, folks think of um, um, Asian immigrants maybe just in the past 30, 40 years. Right. No, so yeah, no, it, it goes way back. Yeah. Um, the f I think the first time you see um, Asian immigrants being um, referenced is, as living in Quincy is 18, 1880, I think is the first, think so, the first yeah. census is we, right? we get. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So it's, it's very, very long history. Okay. Very, very deep roots in the community. I can see why that would be the most popular. You yeah, know, no, right it's, yeah. it's um, it got, I think it, it had something like uh, uh, five or 600 views mm -hmm. already, yeah. uh, which has been fantastic. So long. And it, it's pulling from all over, too. I and mean, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the interesting thing. It's not just pulling Quincy people. I mean, yeah. you're getting. Well, I, I've uh -huh. had people comment, um, fi uh, people from Texas. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure why they're interested in Quincy history, but I'm always <laughs> happy um, yeah. to hear it. So how did you kind of get led down that path? Uh, yeah, it was entirely by accident as well, which is really what's interesting is we had um, someone uh, call in, essentially do a cold call looking for information about his family. His name is Chris Toy. He's the son of, um, or the grandson of uh, the, the, the proprietor of the King Joy restaurant. Oh. So he was looking for information about his grandfather's establishment. and. At first, you know, I thought we weren't going to have very much, um, but as I kept digging, I just f kept finding more and more and more information. The story just kept getting bigger and more interesting because you also, on top of the, um, it's I think it's the second uh, official uh, Chinese restaurant, but it's the, certainly the most successful. Kay. There was only one beforehand, and it mm -hmm. closed after about a year okay. being open. Um, so this is a great story, and then uh, within the family you have, I think, four members of the family served in World War II. Really? Uh, you have uh, the first Chinese-American graduate of Quincy High School. Um, it was the eldest daughter. You also have a number of um, they, a number of the, the children worked for Quincy in various uh, civic c capacities. Okay. So you mm -hmm. have the first um, Asian American um, teacher in Quincy, the first Asian American nurse at Quincy schools, mm -hmm. um, and just uh, you know some tremendous stories yeah. within that. Um, so we have, so part one of that story has been already put up on the blog and I'm work, currently working on part two, which should, I'm hoping to have ready to publish in the fall. Okay, all right. So, I mean, you, you know, all these online databases now of folks uh, researching that has their been family trees very helpful. are yes, so popular. That is exactly what it, th that has been extremely helpful. Okay. Um, so it's it's partially through Ancestry yeah. um, that I've been able to track some, some information there and confirm it and, and track some other people. Um, I was also a, using Genealogy Bank to get access to um, the uh, Patriot Ledger mm -hmm. when uh, during the pandemic, of course, when the library was closed. Otherwise, I'd be here at the library mm -hmm. digging through yes. um, otherwise. Um, so that's been very useful. Um, and then the uh, old city direct uh, directories, which we actually have in our um, in our archives. Okay. So that uh, sort of combination of all three of those sources, I've been able to just kind of chip away and yeah, yeah. have uh, tracked down the story. And it's been a, a really tremendous adventure, really. A history detective. Indeed, yeah, yeah. No, I say that um, public history is, is half um, storytelling and half gumshoe detective yeah. work. <laughs> well, it's interesting. It, it, you know, I think folks, when they hear the Quincy Historical Society, they think, oh, they just have all the information about 
the Adamses right. and the and the shipbuilding and the granite industry. Right. This is modern yeah. modern history. Modern history, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, and we're really committed in trying to rededicate ourselves um, yeah. as to doing that. Um, when we had the 125th anniversary three years ago, we kind of said, you know, we want to take 1893 and move forward mm -hmm. because a lot of that history, as Alexander has demonstrated, it, we the community is fundamentally um, different than the earlier community. I mean, the, this is a period of tremendous change, yep. um, and you know, it, it becomes a much more dynamic city from that period on. Uh, really up through the present it's uh, as we know very dynamic right it, it, all sorts of changes are happening yes. currently so that history really needs to be um, discovered and documented and kind of put together and we have bits and pieces of it. people know very well-known parts of it like the four river story the howard johnson story but stories like this that yeah. are really essential to what makes the city this the place it is Absolutely. Uh, yeah. need to be found and, and kind of found individually and then hopefully eventually kind of stitched together. Integrated so, yeah. into the fabric of the city's yeah, story, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's interesting, yeah. you know, the latest 2020 census, mm -hmm. of course, just showed how diverse exactly. Uh, exactly. the city is, uh, over 30% yeah. now, uh, Asian population, yeah. but a, a very fast-growing Hispanic population, exactly. African-American, uh, Middle Eastern, yeah. Um, yeah. Eastern European, so it, it's, it's, it's really, um, uh, it's a microcosm, I think, of what's going on across the country. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a real experiment in democracy here, and, it's, and so we need to start addressing all sure. of that. Sure. Yeah. And you didn't forget the old Quincy, though. <laughs> oh, no. With the Book of Days. The Book of Days. Yes. <laughs> tell me about that, and tell me about the next version. <laughs> uh, oh, well, we did the Book of Days. Yes. Jump in whenever you want on this <laughs> one. Uh, We did the Book of Days for the 125th, yep. which was in 2018. Yeah. And the idea was rather than try and pick any one thing to kind of give a smorgasbord of things that happened keyed to specific dates. Yes. So from the profound to the downright silly <laughs> wound up being in there. Yeah. Um, and it was, you know, it worked very well. And uh, what we found is we keep finding things that we hadn't stumbled on before. Yeah. And we keep saying, oh, we've got to do another book of days. Mm -hmm. So. I do uh, that every morning. One of my root, part of my morning routine when I get into the office is yeah. I read the the Daily Patriot Ledger and anything that's, you know, I think might be oh, an I interesting entry. <laughs> I write that down okay. and and to save that for potentially another uh, yeah. volume. There, there you go. go. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Is this uh, available at the? Absolutely. At the this museum? is still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It is still in print, and we are more than happy to sell a copy to anybody that would would like one. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's it, it's still. Still a good read, I think. I agree, yeah. I, um, uh, as I told Alexander before we went on, I, yeah. I look at it and use it every day on yeah. our, our morning show yeah. here at QA TV. We should acknowledge the three people mm. who really worked. Cer certainly. Four people, I guess. Uh, Dan Simmons, Wayne Miller, uh, Corinne Waite. Uh, that's it, right? Yeah. yeah. Th our three. Yeah, three um, of our st stalwart. Researchers, researchers, volunteers, yeah. board members. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Anything else we should touch on right now? I know um, everything is tenuous now with the pandemic yeah. still uh, still with us, unfortunately. Yeah. But the big news is the historical society is open. Is back open. and figure, yeah, look for us in October. We should be making some more more splash. Okay, good. Yeah. We look forward to that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Absolutely, okay. thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, QuincyHistory.org. QuincyHistory.org, yeah. yes. Quincy um, History, yeah. And again, the phone number is 617-773-1144. Right. Yes. All right, thanks. Good thanks. to talk to you both. Thank Appreciate you very it. much. Thanks. It was You're great. You're very welcome. And thank you for watching AM Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. We'll see you next time.